shamrock plain. I stood a while where nature smiled amid the rocks and streams. On a mid-trend mild I cast my eyes beneath the fertile vale. And the song she sung as she walked on was me pearls run away. Chunaker. Glue shock tea a willa kill with Chunaka. Brockdiat. Alien. Dina a tart Chunaka. Heal me, rev me, a can of kill Chunaka again. But many of you don't know what that means. I can't blame you. You didn't ship native speakers across the globe. You didn't take it out of schools. You didn't make it illegal to speak Irish at all because the truth is you weren't after our language. And neither were the British. They were after our identity. By banning the words, our history was recorded and the British hoped that we'd forget where we came from, who we were. But I fought back. And not with the shotgun or homemade explosives, but with this pen. I pulled from the wreckage of our beautiful language, the stories, the myths, the poems, the legends that may have otherwise been forgotten by rewriting them in English. Now, they could be legally told in every Irish home so that the country never forgets what came before us and so that we can always tell our stories. That's why my plays existed at all. First performed on the Irish stage, which on the Abbey stage, which I helped build for much the same reason. Those floorboards were meant for stories by Irish people and for Irish people, and the rising of the moon that walked across the planks for the first time in 1907. I now present you the rising of the moon. I think this will be a good place to put up a notice. Better ask him. Is this a good place for a placard? Will we put up a notice here? On the wall? There's a flight of steps here that leads down to the water. This is a place that should be minded well. If he got down there, his friends might have a boat to meet him. They might send it in here from outside. Would the wall be a good place to put a notice up? It might. You can put it up there. <clears throat> dark hair, dark eyes, smooth face, height five feet five. There's not much to take hold of in that. It's a pity I'd no chance of seeing him before he broke out to jail. They say he's a wonder. That it's he makes all the plans for the whole organisation. There isn't another man in Ireland would have broken jail the way he did. He must have some friends among the jailers. A hundred pounds is little enough for the government to offer for him. You may be sure any man on the force that takes him will get promotion. I'll mind this place myself. I wouldn't mind if he came this way now. He might come slipping along there and his friends might be waiting for him there. And once he got away, there's little chance we'll have of finding him. It's maybe under a load of kelp in a fishing boat he'd be. And if we do get him himself, there's nothing but abuse on our heads for it from the people. And maybe from our own relations. Well now, we have to do our duty in the force. Haven't we the whole country depending on us to keep law and order? It's those that are down would be up, and those that are up would be down if it wasn't for us. Well, hurry on. You've plenty more places to placard yet, and come back here to me then. 
Take the lantern. Don't be too long now. It's, it's very lonesome here with just like the moon. It's a pity we can't stop with you. The government should have brought more police into the town with him in jail and at court time too. Well, good luck to your watch. Hundred pounds reward <laughs> in promotion, sure. There must be a great deal of spending on a hundred pounds. It's a pity some honest man not to be the benefit of that. Sir. Where are you going? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a poor ballad singer, Your Honor. I'd love to sell some of these to the sailors. Stop! Didn't they tell you to stop? You can't go down there. It's a hard thing to be poor. All the world is against the poor. Who are you? You'd be as wise as myself if I told you. But I don't mind. I'm one Jimmy Walsh, a ballad singer. Jimmy Walsh? I don't know that name. Sure, they know it well enough in Ennis. Were you ever in Ennis, Sergeant? What brought you here? That's to the courts I came, thinking I might make a few shillings here and there. It's in the one train with the judges I came. Oh. Well, if you came so far, you may as well go farther. But you'll walk out of this. I will. I will. I'll just go on where I was going. Come back from them steps. No one has leave to pass down them tonight. I'll, ju I'll just sit on the steps here till I see will some sailor buy a ballad off me that will give me my supper. They do be late going back to the ship. It's often I see them in Cork carrying down the key in a handcart. Move on, I tell you. I won't have anyone lingering about the key tonight. Very well. It's the poor that have the hard life. Maybe yourself might like one, Sergeant. No, here, here's a good sheet now. Content and a pipe. Oh, you went like that one. Yeah. Pure and the goat. Oh, so, oh so sorry, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't like that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Skibbereen. Now that's a lovely song. Move on. Ah, wait till you hear it, Sergeant. Oh, Father dear, and I often hear you speak of Erin Dial. Stop that noise. Where are you going? You told me to be going, and I'm going. Don't be a fool. I didn't tell you to go that way. I told you to go back to the town. Back to the town? Okay. I'll show you. Be off with you. What are you waiting for? I think I know what you're waiting for, Sergeant. And what's that to you? And I know very well the man you're waiting for. I know him well. I'll be going. You know him. Come back here. What sort is he? Come back, is it, Sergeant? Do you want to have me killed? Why do you say that? Never mind. I wouldn't be in your shoes if the reward was ten times as much. Not if it was ten times as much. Come back here. Come back. <coughs> what sort is he? Where did you see him? I saw him in my own place, in the County Clare. I tell you, you wouldn't want to be looking at him. You'd be afraid to be in the one place of him. There isn't a weapon he doesn't know the use of. And it's the strength. His muscles are as hard as that wall. Is he as bad as that? He is then. Oh, do you tell me so? There was a poor man in our place. A sergeant from Ballyvaughan. It was with a lump of stone. He did it! I never heard about that. <laughs> you wouldn't, sergeant. It's not everything that happens that gets into the papers. And there was a policeman in plain clothes too. It was, it was in Limerick he was. It was just after the time of the attack in the police barrack in Kilmallock. Moonlight, just like this. Waterside. Nothing was known for certain. You tell me so. That's a terrible county to belong to. That's so indeed. You might be standing there, looking out this way, thinking you saw him coming up this side of the quay. But then he could be on the other side. 
and he'd be on you before you knew where you were. Oh, it's a whole troop of police they ought to put here to stop a man like that. But if you'd like me to stop with you, I could be sitting up on this pillar. No, I could be looking down this side. You know him well too. I know him a mile off, Sarge. You wouldn't want to be sharing the reward. Is it a poor man like me that has to be going the roads and singing in fairs to have the name on him that he took a reward? But you don't want me. I'll be safer in the town. Uh, you, you, you can stop. Very well, Sergeant. I wonder now, you're, you're not tired out, Sergeant, walking up and down the, the way you are now. Well, if I'm tired, I'm used to it. Because you might have hard work before you know it tonight yet. No, take it easy while you can. There's, there's plenty of space here in the pillar. And you can think much better when you're sitting down. Oh. You're right. You made me feel a bit queer there with the way you talked. Sergeant, what's that? No. It's a hard thing to be in the force, out at night, and no thanks for it, for all the danger we're in. There's nothing we get but abuse from the people, and no choice but to obey our orders. And never ask at all when a man is sent into danger, if you're a married man with a family. think of him. You know, to think of us two sitting here and he creeping up the key, maybe to get to us. Are you keeping a good lookout? I am. And for no reward too. Aren't I the foolish man? But when I saw a man in trouble, I never could help get him out of it. your reward in heaven. <laughs> I know that, Sergeant, but life is precious. You, you can sing if it gives you more courage. Her head was bare and her grey hair over eyes hung down. Her neck and waist, her hands and feet with iron chains were bound. Her pencil strain and plaint of wail mingled with the evening gale. And the song she sung with mournful tongue was me poor old Gronya Will. Her lips so sweet that monarch's kiss. That's and not it. Her gown she wore was stained with gore. That's it. You missed that bit. You're right, Sergeant. Her gown she wore was stained with gore. Missed that, yeah. yeah. But to think of a man like you, knowing a song like that. 
There's many a thing a man might know and might not have any wish for. Now I dare say, Sergeant, in your youth, you used to be sitting up on a wall like we're sitting up on these pillars now, and the lads beside you, and you singing Grown Your Whale. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> and the Shanban walked. I did it. And the Green of the Cape. That was one of them. <laughs> Maybe the man you're waiting for tonight used to be sitting up on the wall when he was young and singing those same songs. Wish. I think I see something coming. It's only a dog. It's a queer world, Sergeant. Maybe it's one of the boys you used to be singing with that time. You'll be arresting today or tomorrow, sending him to the court dock. It's true enough, indeed. And maybe one night after you've been singing, that the lads had told you some plan. Some plan to free the country, that you might have joined them. And maybe it's you that's in trouble now. Who knows, but I might. I have great spirit in those days. It's a queer world, Sergeant. And it's little any mother knows when she sees her child creeping up the floor. What might happen to it before it's gone through its life? Or who will be who in the end? That's a queer thought now, a true thought. Right now till I, till I think that out. If it wasn't for the sense that I have and for my wife and family and for me joining the force the time I did, it might be myself now would be after breaking out of jail and hiding in the dark and it might be himself who's hiding in the dark and that got out of jail would be sitting up here where I am now. <laughs> and maybe myself would be trying to make my escape from him and maybe himself would be keeping the law and myself would be breaking it. <laughs> and maybe myself would be trying to put a bullet in his head or take up a lump of the stone the way you said he did. What's that? Nothing, Sergeant. I had a notion it might be a boat. I thought his friends might come around the quay with a boat. Sergeant, I'm thinking it was the people you were, not the law you're with now when you were a young man. Oh. If I was foolish then, then those days are gone. Maybe, Sergeant, it comes into your head sometimes, in spite of your hat and your tunic, that it might be as well for you to have followed Grand New Will. It's none of your business what I think. Maybe, Sergeant, you'll be on the side of the country yet. Don't talk to me like that. I have my duties and I know them. That was a boat. I hear the oars. Oh, come tell me, Sean O'Farrell, where the gathering is to be. By the old spot by the river, right well known to you and me. Noise. One word more for single token, whistle up the marching tune. With your pike upon your shoulder at the rising of the moon. You don't stop that, I'll arrest you. That was a signal. You can't pass this way. Stop further back. Who are you? You're no ballad singer. You need to ask who I am. That placard will tell you. <laughs> You're the man I'm looking for. I am. There is a hundred pounds in my head. There's a friend of mine below in a boat. He knows a safe place to bring me to. It's a pity. It's a pity. You deceived me. You deceived me well. I'm a friend of Gronuil. There is a hundred pounds on my head. It's a pity. It's a pity. Now will you let me pass? Or must I make you let me? Well, I'm in the force. I, I'll, not, I'll not let you pass. I thought to do this with words. What's that? Uh, that's my comrades returning. You won't be treating them. The friend of Grand Oh, the lot of the placards. If he makes his escape, he won't be unknown. He will make it. 
Did anyone come this way? Uh, no one. No one at all? No one at all. We had no orders to go back to the station. Will you stop along with you? Oh, I don't want you. There's nothing for you to do here. You bade us to come back here and keep watch with you. I'd sooner be on my own. Would anyone come this way and you making all this talk? It's, it's, it's not the place to be quiet. Well, we'll leave you the lantern anyhow. I don't want to take it with you. You might want it. There are clouds coming up and you have the darkness of night before you yet. I'll leave it over here at the wall. Take it with you, I tell you. And no more talk. What are you waiting for? For my hat, of course. And my wig. Wouldn't want to wish me a death of cold. Well, good night, comrade. Thank you. You did me a good turn tonight, and I'm obliged to you. Maybe I'll be able to do as much for you when the small rise up and the big fall down. When we all change places at the rising of the moon. Pound reward. A hundred pounds. I wonder now, am I as big a fool as I think I am? charmed by the embodiment of Ireland, of Irish people. That's a story that reminds a nation of who we are. Well done, lads. Very good. Right, man. Great stuff. Just a little work on the singing, okay? <laughs> Based on your reaction, I can see that many of you haven't seen this piece before, which is fine, I suppose. Obviously, a younger me would have loved if something I had written was the most famous piece of literature to exist, but I would have at least liked it to sit alongside the Yeats poems or the Irish folklore I translated. This next play, The Jail Gate, it realistically pits the Irish against the English. I'm sure this one made waves across Ireland. It takes place at the gate of the jail, and so the audience, of course, could place it at any jail across the country when they retell it to their towns. I now present you the jail gate. come to our journey's end and that this should be the gate of the jail. Well it's certain it could be no other place. There was surely never in the world such a terrible great height of a wall. He that was used to the mountain to be closed up inside of that. What call he had to go moonlighting or to bring himself into any danger at all. It is no wonder a man to grow faint-hearted, and he shut away from the light. I never would wonder at all at anything he might be driven to say. 
There were good men were jailed before him. Never gave in to anyone. It is what I'm thinking, Mary. He might not have done what they say. She you heard what the neighbours were called and the time their own boys were brought away. It is Dennis Cattle, they were saying, that informed against them in the jail. There is nothing that is bad or is wicked, but a woman will put it out of her mouth. And she, seeing them that brought away from her home and her sight. Terry Fury's mother was saying it. And Pat Ruin's mother and his wife, they came out calling it after me. It is Dennis swore against them in the jail. The sergeant was boasting, they were telling me. The day he came searching their cave, it was he himself got his confession with drink he had brought him in the jail. They might have done that. The ruffians. And the boy had no blame on him at all. If he did give their names up itself, there was maybe no wrong in it at all. Sure, it's known to all the village. It was Terry that fired the shot. Stop your mouth now. Don't be talking. You haven't any sense worthwhile. Let the sergeant do his own business with no help from the neighbours. It was Pat Ruin that tempted them on account of some vengeance of his own. Every creature knows my poor Dennis never handled a gun in his life. I wish we'd know what's in his letter there after sending us through the post. Isn't it a great pity for the two of us to be without learning? There are some of the neighbours have learning and you made me not to bring it near them. You might have told us what way he is. Or what time you will be quitting the jail. There is wonder on me, Mary Cushion, that you may not be content with what I say. It might be they put down in this letter that Dennis have informed not the rest. I suppose it is all we have to do so. To stop here and wait for the opening of the door. It was a terrible long road from Sleep Ekna, and we were travelling the whole of the night. There is no other thing for us to do but to come here and to give him a warning. What way would he be facing the neighbours and he to come back to Darakel? It is likely they will let him go free, Mary, before many days will be out. Sure, what call are they to be keeping him? It is certain they promised him his life. If we promised him his life, Mary Cushion, he must live it in some other place. Let him never see Dara Kale or Darada or Drumderod. Mary, what place we bring him to? And we driven from the place that we know. What person sent among strangers can have one day's comfort on earth? It is only among strangers I am thinking that he could be hiding his story at all. It's best for him to go to America, where people are as thick as grass. What way could he go to America and he have a no means in his hand? There's himself and myself to make the voyage and the little one in at home. I would sooner to sell the holding than to ask for a price paid for blood. There will be money enough for the two of you to settle your debts and to go. And what would yourself be doing? And we to go over the sea? It is not among the neighbours you would wish to be ending your days. I wonder no one would know me in the workhouse in Loch Derard. I could go in there and I know to give them my name. Ah, oh, don't be talking foolishness. Sure, what way would I bring the child? He's hardly out of the cradle. He'd be lost out there in the States. I could bring him into the workhouse. I to give him some other name. You could call for him when you'd be settled or have some place of your own. It is very cold at the dawn. It is time for them to open that door. I brought the table. 
potato, or a bit of a cake, or a bread. I'm in dread of it being opened, and not knowing what will we hear. The night that Dennis was taken, he had a great cold and a cough. I think I hear some person coming. <gasps> There's a sound like a rattle in the keys. God and his mother protect us. I'm in dread being found here at all. What are you doing here, women? It's no place to be spending the night time. It is to speak to my son, I am asking. I have been jailed here these eight weeks. If you day. have no order to visit him, it's as good for you to go away home. Got this letter here yesterday. It might be it is giving me leave. If that's so, then he should be under the doctor or in the hospital ward. It's no wonder if he's down with a hardship, for he had a great cold. Uh, Give me here the letter to read it. Sure, it never was opened at all. Meself and this woman have no learning. We were loth to trust any other one. It was posted in Galway the 20th, and this is the last of the month. We never thought to call to the post office. It was chance that brought it to us in the end. Poor unfortunate women. Don't you know Dennis Cattle is dead? <gasps> You're right to come this time yesterday if you wished any last word at all. God and his mother protect us and have mercy on Dennis' soul. What is that man after saying? So it cannot be Dennis is dead. Dead since the dawn of yesterday. And another man now in his cell. I'll go see who has charge of his clothing if you're wanting to bring it away. There is lasting kindness in heaven, but no kindness is found upon earth. There will surely be mercy for him, and not the hard judgment of men. But my boy, that was the best in the world, that never rose a hair on my head, to have died with his name under blemish, and left a great shame upon his child, it's better for him to have killed the whole world than to give any witness at all. Have you no word to say, Mary Cushion? Am I left here to kill him alone? Oh, Dennis, my heart is broken. You'd have died with the hard word upon you. My grief. You to be alone now that spent so many nights in company. What way will I be going back through Gert and through Kilbacanti? The people will not be coming out keen in you. They will say no prayer for the rest of your soul. What way will it be this Sunday? And I going up the hill to Mass. Every woman with her own comrade a merry cushion to be walking her alone. What way will I be the Monday, and the neighbours turning their heads from the house? The turf, then is caught to lying on the bog, and no well-wisher to bring it to the hearth. What way will I be in the night time, and none but the dog calling after you? Two women to be mixing a cake, and not a man in the house to break it. What way will I sow the field, and no man to drive the furrow? The sheep to be scattered before springtime that was brought together at the harvest. I would not begrudge it else. And you leaving praises after you. 
The neighbors keen in along with me would be better to me than an estate. But my grief, your name to be blackened in the time of the blackening of rushes. Your name never to rise up again in the growing time of the year. But tell me, Mary, do you think would they give us the body of Dennis? I would lie there with my cell phone -y. And I can hire some man to dig the grave. There now. It's all he brought in with him. The flannels, the shirt and the shoes. It is little they're worth altogether. Those mountainy boys to be poor. They had a right to give him time to ready himself the day they brought him to the magistrates. He'd be wearing his Sunday coat and they would see he was a decent boy. But tell me, what way will they bury him? The way we can follow after him. There is no one but this woman, Mary Cahill, his mother, and myself to show respect to him at all. That is not to be done. He's buried since yesterday in the field that is belonging to the jail. It is a great hardship for that to have been done and not one of his own to follow after him. Those that break the law must be made an example of. Why would they be laid out like a well-behaved man? A long rope and a short berry. That is the order for a man that is hanged. <gasps> a man that is hanged? Oh, oh, Dennis, was it they that made an end of you and not the great God at all? His curse and my curse upon them that did not let you die on the pillow. May the curse of God be fulfilled that was on them before they were burned. My curse upon them that brought harm on you and on Terry Fury that fired the shot. And the other boys that they hanged them along with him. Terry Fury and Pat Ron that were brought from Dark Hill. They did not, but set them free twelve hours ago. It is likely you may have passed them in the night time. Set free, is it? And Dennis made an end of. What justice is there in the world at all? He was taken near the house. They knew his footmark. There was no witness given against the rest worthwhile. Then the sergeant was lying. And the people were lying. But they said that Dennis had informed on the rest. Oh, I've no time to be stopping here talking. The judge got no evidence, and the law set them free. Are there any people on the streets till I call on them? to come hither, that they ever hear in Galway such a thing to be done? A man to die for his neighbour? Tell it out on the streets for the people to hear! Dennis Cahill from Sleeve Aga is dead. It was Dennis Cahill from Dark Hell that died in the place of his neighbor. It was he who was young and calmly and strong and the best drinker and the best hurler. It was not a little thing for him to die and he protecting his neighbor Gather up, Mary Cushion, the clothes for your child. They'll be wanted by this one and that one. The boys crossing the sea in the springtime will be craving a thread for memory. One word to the judge. And Dennis was free. They offered him all sorts of riches. They brought him drink in the jail and gold to swear away the life of his neighbor. Dennis would not speak. He would never be an informer. It's no lies at all, he would have said, giving witness against Terry Fury. 
Patron was no good friend to him at all, but a foolish, wild companion. It was Terry Fury who knocked a gap in the wall and sent the calves into a meadow. I will go to Gord and kill Bacanti and Darada and Drumderod. I will call on the people and singers at the fairs to make a great praise for Dennis. The child he has left at home that is shook. It is his great will be in his boast in his father. All Ireland will have a welcome before him and all the people in Boston. I just stoop on a stick through half a hundred years. I will never be tired of praising. Come hither, Mary Cushion, till we shout it through the roads. Dennis Cahal died for his neighbor. my plays for fame. I wrote it for the same reason Dennis Cahill chose to die. It wasn't just about me, it was about preserving my community, not allowing us to forget. But if none of you have seen my plays nor speak Irish, has anything I did made a difference at all? Or did my work hurt the cause? Did my translations make it easy for our language to be forgotten? What was it going to take? One more play? One more paragraph? What one line or word would have solidified the making of change? I didn't set out to be remembered, but I wanted to make the change. <laughs>